In this video, we're going to match histograms um, to some summary statistics. And I want you to look at the summary statistics given. Um, we have mean, median, and standard deviation. And another thing I want you to notice is that the mean and median are the same for each set of data, data sets 1, 2, 3, 4. Um, and a lot of these have the same mean and median across data sets, um, specifically 54. There's only one that's different with a mean and median of 63. Um, and then next, look at the standard deviations. We have standard deviations that are very small, like 1.6, up to relatively large, like 23. Um, now, because the mean and the median are exactly the same, I'm going to show you how to focus on just the median. And what I did was I took example or choice A, um, and I've got a bigger view of choice A here. And I want to show you how you can find the median or roughly where the median would fall in an example like this. Now, this is a frequency histogram. So we have frequencies. Um, notice the scale here and we have the data here along um, the x-axis and we're trying to figure out which data set that belongs to. I'm going to kind of rough estimate this. It looks like this first bin has a frequency of 1, this one 4, this one's probably 6, these are obviously 10, and just kind of keeping with my rough estimate this is what I'm getting here as far as frequency of each bin. And I tell that frequency based off of the height or Y value along the Y axis. Um, so next, I want to see where the midpoint of these values would lie. In other words, that, that median. Um, and if I start to add, well, I could, I, first of all, I could add all these values together. I don't know that that was explicitly stated how many values were in the set um, above. So let's see, that would be... 31, 35, um, 45, 46, I think is what I'm getting all together. 46 pieces of data. And so with 46 pieces of data, let's see, I'm going to take that um, and divide that in half. So I'm around 23, really, yes, between... 23 and 24 would be my midpoint. So what I just did there was I added up all the the frequencies of each bin and I get a total 46. I divided that in half and I get roughly 23 to 24, somewhere in there. So I'm going to start adding these up um, along the right side. So think of this kind of now as like a cumulative frequency is the way I'm looking at it from left to right. So this bin is 1. This plus this bin, moving to the right, I have now 5, plus this next bin, plus 6 would be 11, plus this next bin would be 21, plus this next bin would be 31. So there's 21 pieces of data, in other words, from here over. And I know that my midpoint is the 23rd, between 23rd and 24th piece of data. And here I have 31 pieces of data altogether. So in other words, that midpoint must fall somewhere in here, in this bin. Now, if I notice along my x-axis, that would make it, let's see, that's 44. This is 54. So somewhere between 44 and 54 is the median. Now if I go back up to my summary statistics, somewhere between 44 and 54, so in other words, I, just looking at best matches, you know, making our, 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 a good estimate here, it must be either choice 1, 3, or 4 um, would match this first frequency histogram based off of just the median alone. So if I apply that same technique to the others, um, I get here, again, a median, 
of about 54. You could probably see that this one should be probably also about 54. This one should probably be about 54. I mean, I could further analyze it, but notice that in this particular histogram, somewhere around the middle may fall a little bit higher than 54. So, again, I don't know exactly what it is, but looking at my summary statistics, the only value higher than 54 is the 63. And so that lets me see that histogram C best match best matches with data set 2. Okay, so I can eliminate that one off my list. Let's mark that one out. We're done with that. So up next, what I want to do is focus on the standard deviation. And standard deviation describes spread. So I have, actually, let me even just mark this out so I'm no longer considering that one. I have standard deviations from 1.6, 9, and 23. Well, if a standard deviation is really small, then the data set is not very spread out. But if the standard deviation is larger, again, relatively larger, um, then this data set is more spread out. So what I'm going to look at here for spread is the x-axis. I'm focusing on the x-axis of the ones that I see. Um, and this x-axis, I have data going from here to here. Okay, that value there is, what are we counting by here? It looks like by, by 10, so that should probably be negative 4 for counting by 10s to 114. That's a rough range of the data set based on the histogram. This one is, looks like we're counting by fives here, so that would be 29 to 84. Notice not quite as spread out as data set A, or the histogram A. Um, and then this last one from 49 to 59. This one is the, has the least amount of spread. So that's going to help me um, make these final matches. So this one has the smallest standard deviation. This one has the largest standard deviation. And this one is in between. So largest standard deviation, I'll start with that one. Here's the largest standard deviation of the values that, that are listed. So this one must match with, our data set four must match with histogram A. Smallest standard deviation, there's the smallest of the ones listed. So data set one must, must match with histogram D. And then the one in between must match with histogram B.